Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and what's next. It's a show that asks questions and peels back the layers of our average everyday experience and goes beyond scratching the surface. We interview people doing incredible things who are making a difference around the globe. Join me as we listen in and get one step closer to understanding that big ideas shared create collaboration. Collaboration can inspire community and communities create social change. I'm David Peck and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with Pierre-Philippe Chevigny. He is a a young filmmaker, uh, I'm going to say a young, incredibly talented filmmaker who is interested, as he says, in social issues. And his new film, Rebel, is uh, getting a lot of attention. And uh, it's it's won uh, uh, several awards, many awards, actually. The Golden Owl Award at Tirana International Film Festival and uh, now makes it an Oscar qualifying uh, film. I think uh, Pierre Philippe uh, mentions that it's now been seen at over a hundred film festivals around the world. And the beautiful thing about the film is that uh, not only uh, is it a beautiful film, it's an important film. It's one of those that sort of brings uh, um, uh, all, everything kind of together in a very uh, holistic way. So it's it's interesting. It's important. It's going to raise some questions for you. But it's also, as I said, a beautiful uh, beautiful piece uh, to watch. So. So it's a short, it's about 16 minutes long. Uh, Pierre Philippe uh, tells us uh, in the interview, the beginning and the end, where you can see it, but it's on YouTube, CBC Gem Canada. It's, uh, you can pretty much, as he says, uh, see it everywhere, which is unusual for a film on face-to-face, or at least for, uh, especially for a, uh, a newer film and, and a short film. Uh, so uh, one of the benefits of this virtual world uh, we're living in now, we talk about right-wing extremism. We talk about the, the balance in, in, in trying to have that conversation and about, um, you know, about being politically active and how film can foster debate. And we, we talk a little bit around whether or not film can actually, you know, create change. But one of the things that we talk about and certainly talk about a fair bit here on face to face is this idea of empathy and how, how storytelling has the ability to, to allow us at least to step into that empathetic uh, kind of response or understanding of others who we don't normally uh, hang out with and we can step into other communities. I think, you know, what's really beautiful about Rebel is there's this uh, there, I think there's this hope uh, in, in the next generation and, uh, uh, um, uh, Pierre Philippe does, uh, tells us this story through the eyes of a, uh, a family uh, and a group of people, uh, but, but, but also through the eyes of a young boy. And children play an important, a very important role in this, this film. We talk about our surroundings and, uh, and, and about how we're kind of oblivious to them, but they're having an impact. And then uh, we, we get into nature versus nurture and about, about fear and a lack of education and about social media, you know, acting as echo chambers. And Pierre Philippe talks a little bit about that. And when he started to do some of uh, his research, he he stepped into into some of these groups on on, on social media and spent uh, a fair bit of time there. And um, um, yeah, very revealing, as you will hear uh, in 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 the film. So uh, this is a film for me that that uh, is going to be a favorite for me uh, in uh, well twenty twenty one, I guess now, but for twenty twenty um, and. Yeah, take the time to watch this and uh, check out the link in the bio. You'll see it there. If you found us through iTunes, um, head over to face to face live.ca or davidpecklive.com. You'll find more information there, not only about what I do as a consultant and as a speaker, but also over 540 interviews, access there to uh, people making a difference uh, through storytelling and writing and so on with a real focus on film uh, of late where, you know, film ideas and social change uh, meet. So uh, please sign up for the newsletter. Uh, we've got a new website uh, that's coming up live and hopefully you're on the new website right now. And and um, if you will, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, give us a like or two there and uh, um, please socially mediate us. What we'd really love though is a review on iTunes. Uh, or Spotify or something along those lines. But iTunes reviews are really important for a whole lot of reasons. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, don't uh, touch that dial. We've got an important, interesting, fun interview coming up with uh, Pierre-Philippe uh, Chavigny uh, talking about uh, his new film, uh, Rebel. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by a very special guest here with us today. We have Pierre-Philippe Chevigny here to talk about his new film, uh, Rebel. But actually, I don't think that's the pr- pr- correct French uh, title of the film. Uh, uh, Pierre-Philippe, thank you for joining me here today on Face to Face. Such a pleasure to have you. 
Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, so yeah, in French, it's called recrue, which means recruit. Yes. But my 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 favorite title, my actual original title was Rebel. Uh, it, it was. That it just so happens that there's two recent movies uh, in Quebec that were called Rebel. So it wasn't like a very uh, commercially viable choice to name it Rebel as well. So we decided to to use two different uh, titles but my favorite one is rebel so it's just 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 to avoid confusion sort of you went uh, more right. more for the quebec uh, yeah. Qua audience than yeah. a global yeah. audience yeah that's right it's listen congratulations uh what a it's can i say that it's a beautiful film it is a beautiful film it is a, a unsettling uh, piece that you've put together here this uh what is it a 16 minute short uh, so yeah nice. congratulations and thank you it's it really i i, I loved it Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So, um, hmm. Uh, tell, let's set some context. Obviously, you know, we're hoping people can see this film. And what's I, for me as a podcaster, what's unusual? Uh, one of the things I've decided, uh, Pierre Philippe, is I've been doing this about eight years, is to try to start focusing on films that people can actually access yeah. easily. I've interviewed a lot of filmmakers over the years, and I'm so glad about it. But but it's really hard sometimes, especially with small, films. to see the films. Right with small independent productions, but but we've got some great news uh, for our face to face audience. Tell us where they can see uh, Recru or a Rebel, uh, uh, please. It's really everywhere now. It's uh, if you're in Canada, it's on CBC Jam. If you're in Quebec, it's on EC2 uh, TV. If you're in the States, you can watch it on YouTube, on Vimeo Staff Picks, on Short of the Week. Uh, and yes, yeah, same for everywhere else. HBO Europe as well, if you're in Eastern wow. Europe. Arte, if you're in France. So it's really everywhere now. Wow, that's amazing. Nicely done. Congrats on that too. And I think you mentioned too, just before we hit the record button, you've just crossed the 100 uh, film festival line as well. Is that right? Yeah, yeah that's right. 100 festivals. I, I, I honestly cannot be believe it. Like it's to me that, that, that was like the pretty much the, the end goal for me to get as many festivals as we could and to just reach that level is really 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 awesome so how much context can you provide for our audience without giving away uh too much about it and also let's tell everyone there's a bit of oscar buzz around this film as well right is, is isn't yeah, that right. uh yeah yeah can, are you allowed to talk about that well, yeah, I mean, we qualified for the, the Oscar, so that, that doesn't mean like we're not nominated or anything, but it right, can be, right. it, it's eligible to be submitted as Absolutely. The, uh, for the Best Short Film Award, because uh, we won the, 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 uh, the Oscar qualifying award at Tirana International Film Festival a few months back. Um, but yeah, it's, it's Rebels, basically a film about the rise of right-wing extremism, specifically in, in Quebec. Uh, you know, for the past five years or so, there's been an increase in these sorts of uh, weird militia groups, something that we really did not have ever before. You know, Quebec has always mm. been pretty left-leaning nationalistic, but sure. very left-leaning yeah. uh, overall. And uh, and there's, it kind of echoes what's happening in the States also with the, the alt-right movement, like these these groups of people that that organize together and you know go out and train with survivalist techniques in the woods and start shooting guns and that, that kind of stuff that exists also in Quebec and um, like in 2017 there's been a migrant surge in in, uh, in Quebec a lot of people started crossing the border uh, at Rock Sam Road and all uh, that really lit the fire of right-wing extremism and that's the point where they really really started to become very active and very present also in the mainstream media and so I, I wanted to make a film about it because it was like everything I do, all of my short films are always inspired by social issues. And that's definitely one, one of the issues that was worrying to me as I started doing research and eventually became Rebel. So, so why make a narrative film about this, uh, this young family rather than do a doc yeah. about this issue? Because on a certain level, it almost seems like that would make more sense, right? Yeah. right. In, in a certain way. Um, so the thing about documentary is that, that you need to have like the consent of people that you film. And I did like at first I, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. It could have turned out as a documentary. But one of the reasons I turned to fiction is because I reached out to these people and I, I said, you know, I'm interested in the subject and I didn't want to pretend like I, I agreed with them. I wanted to be like very clear and transparent, make, you know, 
letting them know that I disagreed with them, but I was still interested in hearing their pers or their perspective. Oh, so, and so you mean you mean you reached out to some of these right wing groups oh, to yeah. actually get oh, to yeah. know them and and yeah. I mean a bit, bit of research, I guess. Yeah, yeah. At first, it could have turned out just as pure research, or I could have done a documentary eventually. But but they turned me down, obviously, because I didn't support their ideas and I didn't want to pretend either. So. And so starting at that point, I started doing research and most of my research was done on social media, you know, just hmm. um, subscribing to all, all of their, their group pages and following them. And all, all of those people, they tend to do a lot of, of video blogging, like, you know, filming, filming them, themselves in their cars and just running on for, you know, 15 minutes and just post that online. And that was the basis of my research, basically. And I decided to incorporate all of the stuff that I researched about to make a, a fiction with it. You're a pretty young filmmaker, it seems to me. I think I'm old enough to say that. I hope I hope I'm allowed to say that. Um, you're inspired by social issues. Tell me why. Why why is that? Does that have anything to do with your upbringing or uh, the books um, you read, the 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 undergraduate degree that you did, etc.? I'm really interested by that. I come from a somewhat modest but very politically active family uh, for sure and also I went to like in Quebec we have CGEP which is like the the college you go to before university and the, the program that I took was a, a film program at, oh, okay. uh, at the CGEP de saint Laurent, which is a, a, basically a school in Montreal and uh, their program is very based on social political right. issues and so that in that's for sure has influenced the way i i, I approach filmmaking but in a way it's, it's kind of like the the meeting point between my two my two passions like i'm very interested about politics in real life sure. and i'm also very interested about filmmaking and storytelling so i try to like whatever i do is like the meeting point between those, between those two uh, those two points of interest it's so interesting. It's so fascinating. I mean, do you, do you see yourself at some point, someday getting more politically involved? And I don't mean just as a filmmaker as a, or as a critique, but, uh, you know, interesting about Marc Garneau and, uh, uh, and the, mm -hmm. um, you know, foreign, foreign affairs, a former, former astronaut, you know, yeah. isn't, isn't it fascinating? Right? Yeah, right. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't like shut the door entirely, but it's not something that I I specifically aim for. Um, I know I know a few of my friends are like they, they really want to get involved politically eventually, but I, I tend to be like really shy and not very good in in, in a debate setting. <laughs> right. So like to me, writing. <laughs> so a you script, might not be too good in the House of Commons then. No, yeah. right. Yeah. Like uh, sitting down and writing a script is like a much more controlled environment, and I can <laughs> right. really, really take the time to to uh, to think about what I want to say. So, so Pierre Philippe, if somebody's yelling at you over your shoulder, it might be kind of hard to write the script. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I totally get it. You know, it's interesting. I just I'm, the reason I asked that question is because I am always fascinated. I've been doing international development work for many years, as my listeners will know. Uh, traveled around the world, and I have this. I continue to have this this passion to affect some kind of change and I you know and I a social change uh, a yeah. political change you know yeah. uh, changing the way people see the world perspective and so on and I, I, I was interviewing um, Martin Parnell and Kate McKenzie uh, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday about a, a, a marathon that takes place every year in Afghanistan and mm -hmm. uh, they've started something called the secret marathon it's about gender equality it's about access but it's the metaphor and it's a doc but the metaphor again is this, you know, marathon pushing the boulder, mm -hmm. the myth of Sisyphus. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 about patience and resilience, and so that's those types of things have always resonated with me, and I'm always fascinated, especially when a narrative filmmaker or a narrative storyteller yeah. talks about that being sort of, you yeah. know, important to them. Yeah, you don't have to be an elected official like to to right. do politics. You can, you know, it's there's good. tons of activists out there that 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 Absolutely. do work that that really initiate change. And you know, I don't have the pretension to believe that like film can actually initiate change, but it can for sure foster debates, and that's that's a good starting point to me. And that's the reason I do films. I try to aim to to get debates going so we can actually discuss the you know the social issues that I I think are relevant. To, uh, hey, to the times 
T- tell me about that that fostering of debate because I agree with you and and I I'd like to think that film does storytelling affects change. I mean that's all we have. That's all we are. It seems to me. You know mm-hmm. when you look back through history, our stories to tell and 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 that's I mean that's Thomas King and that's Richard Wagami's famous Indigenous writer. You know stories are meant to heal and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think someone say let's just go polarized here? Let's go let's go dualistic right. Uh, left and and sort of middle uh, down the road is could this film appeal to somebody on say the other side would they be able to get through the full film or are they going to go wow this is just so not cool this is so not fair this is a misrepresentation do do, do you know what i'm asking yeah yeah Yeah, Yeah, in other words how do you change people's minds yeah well, in a way, I think my film is certainly left-leaning, but it tries very hard to be nuanced, sure. especially yep. in the way it depicts like the right-wing militia. They're not fire-breathing dragons. They're, they're not right. like neo-Nazi skinheads. Like the, the, the main character is a father, and he, obviously he loves his son. And I'm not trying to demonize him, even though I don't agree with what he does, you know? And of course, like, if you're really, really, you know, far down the rabbit hole you're not going to enjoy rebel for sure but somebody who like um, who would be like middle of the road like maybe insecure about immigration maybe rebel can make you think about your beliefs and possibly you know uh, for sure feel empathy for for the for the 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 I'm about to spoil something here. But... <laughs> right. It's so hard, right? It's so hard to talk about it without right. without spoiling it, and especially yeah. because it's a short film. Yeah, it's, and it yes, there's better. there's there's something that happens at mid, midpoint in the film, and anyway, it, you're gonna if you ever get to watch it, you're gonna experience empathy. That's for sure. Yeah, you know, it's uh, Roger Ebert and many others. Uh, yeah, I think Adam McGoyan said, you know, the theaters are the cathedrals of our time. And I think he was riffing off an academic. And then, of course, Roger Ebert said, you know, movies are empathy making machines. And mm-hmm. I think that's really true. This idea of story. How, how do you step into somebody else's shoes? And right. I think you you really do that beautifully. And you do that beautifully for both if I can say for both sides of this debate, mm-hmm. uh, and I and I hesitate to do that because it's it's more nuanced than that. There's so mm-hmm. much going on. I mm-hmm. love too, by the way, Pierre, how you start with uh, the 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 boy, you end with the boy, father's out of focus mm-hmm. in both shots. I would imagine that was pretty intentional. And mm-hmm. for me, ultimately, for all the dark subject matter in this film, it really is hopeful. Right, it, it is meant to be hopeful for sure. Uh, it's about basically a kid who grows up in a, an extremist family and he, he gets to witness something that tr- really triggers his un- understanding of the situation. You know, you know the, the main idea be- behind Rebel was like following one of the big demonstrations that La Meurthe, which is one of the militia groups that we had in Quebec, um, and they did a, a big demonstration in Quebec City and um, the front page of one of the new newspapers had the picture of a six or seven year old boy that was waving mm. a flag with their logo on it. Right. And I thought to myself, like that kid doesn't understand the politics behind right. all of this. He's just following his parents, you know, and uh, because he grew up within the movement, he never got to question it. So I, I figure like it would be interesting to tell the story of a boy who's also oblivious to like the sure. the right and wrong questions about, you know, the the environment in which he's growing up and just witnessing something that triggers his understanding of, of, of it all. And then all of a sudden things change. So by the midpoint of the film, like we follow this six six year old boy that just goes through a profound change of, of belief just because he witnesses something. And I thought it'd be interesting to put the viewer uh, in those shoes, which is why I chose to film it with a very, very close and hell camera. Um, and, you know, the background is always out of focus. You don't really see what's going on around there because you're following a character that's ob- ob- oblivious to his surroundings. Uh, and so little by little, as as the the main character starts to understand what's going on around him, then you, the viewer, get to look all around you and then the film becomes more edited. So really the goal was to have the viewer uh, experience that same moment of realization uh, at the mm. same time as the kid. You know? I love how you say uh, the char- the main character is oblivious and yet there's a, uh, there's a shift uh, mm-hmm. and yet he's paying so much attention. 
and and right. and, and, and being affected, right? Mm-hmm. Oblivious mm-hmm. and yet being very affected by everything, well, as I mean, you I mean, say, the empathy. He's oblivious right? in the, in the first five or six right, seven minutes right. of the film, and then he starts understanding, and right. now he pays attention. It's like there's this shock of recognition, right? Right, exactly. And then and then you know the idea was to have the viewer have the same shock. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting. You 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 mentioned about him. Uh, you know, you didn't want to demonize uh, the the father. And I think what's really interesting about the, what what you know, I would call we would call, I suppose, the two of us an extreme, uh, you know, right wing group, a, a militia group, uh, on some level, kind of dangerous, uh, uh, on many levels, kind of dangerous, and yet you know, the father clearly has a deep love for his son. And I think there's this, uh, there's this, um, hmm, there's this, uh, almost this willingness for those of us who, who want to understand mm-hmm. to just polarize, you know, right. oh, that's wrong. That's right. They're evil. They're right. not the left, the mm-hmm. right, and so on. And I just wonder uh, how, how hmm, and with all that's going on around the world, mm-hmm. you know, here in Canada, the US, UK, everywhere, the division that seems to be growing and mm-hmm. COVID is not helping. That's for sure. Just reading a report yesterday about how, you know, the rich people of, of the world are going to be vaccinated probably first. Sure. Uh, and we're starting to see more evidence of that already. Uh, yeah. Uh, how do we start? How do we start healing those? I mean, do, any thoughts I on think, that? I've, yeah, of course. Uh, I think a lot of it is a symptom of, of social media because it creates echo chambers and you're only ever, you know, shown the opinions that you agree with right and right that's definitely like when when i did my research for the first time i was really exposed to the opposite opinion because now i had all of these friends in my facebook feed and then like the algorithms got really confused at some point and i started like um, getting more of the alternate uh, opinion and really what i found out you know the reason the father is not a demon is because i what i found out is that most people who follow these groups they're not neo-nazi skinheads you know they're and that's what's worrying about it that's they're usually everyday normal people and i could recognize like my aunt and my uncle and you mm. know you know, the everyday family guys and, and soccer moms and, you know, and, and they would take their kids along to demonstrations like it's some kind of family friendly. Uh, event. Well, the face, the face painting scene in the film yeah. is, I mean, there's so many moments like this, yeah. uh, Pierre Philippe, that are just so lovely, but mm-hmm. deeply disturbing. Yeah, right. And and that that's that's what I witnessed during my research. And and some of the people who who saw the film thought it was over the top or I was exaggerating that that there could be that people could be, uh, you know, human and very right, right. Uh, lovely with their kids and then support those ideas. But right. that's what I witnessed on social media, you know, normal people that would, of, of course, like the situation that's depicted in the film is fictional. Sure. And it's, yeah. it's, it's set in the near future. It's, it's an anticipation piece, but I think all the elements are already there in a way. And so I, I really wanted like to, the, the militia group to be depicted as close to what I was seeing in my Facebook feed, you know, normal people who just happened to be like stuck in their echo chambers and never got to, they never get to, to see the opposite side. So that's kind of what Rebel's about. Yeah, it's so interesting to, you know, being, being open to other people's perspectives. And yet mm-hmm. sometimes that actually shuts us down. Mm-hmm. Right. Because well, it's, like, it's you hard. Say- like, like for three years, my Facebook feed was all over the place. And, sure. and I started like taking distances with that because if I started re- and I try ne- never to reply to everything I was seeing because I didn't want like to to participate in that at all. But but now I've started like deleting those people because, you know, it's it ends up being toxic, even though they're on the surface, they're nice people. But like the discourse is so is is so you know, opposite to everything I believe in, it gets really toxic after a while. What is it? Why, why is it? Um, hmm, why, why the division? You know, there's a line. I think there's a line in the film. You're not. You're not from our country. Mm-hmm. Where, 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 where does that? Where does that even kind of come from? Is that? I don't know. Is that some sort of innate? selfishness that we all have to fight against what would freud have to say about this you know know. what would it's it's fear and lack of education for sure Mm. like if i i think you're 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 based in toronto right yes yeah Yeah. well i can't i come from sorel which is like a a small town like about an hour from montreal where there's basically no immigration at all right 
and uh, you know that's why I said like I could recognize my aunts and my uncles in in those groups because like for sure the people that, that were around me when I was growing up like like they tended to gravitate towards those ideas as well because they just were never exposed to immigration at all um, so it's it's a lack of you know lack of edu education and it's a lot of fear and you know uh, it's I, I, and it's also I think the reason why I try to make these films because you know uh, watching a film is a way to disc like I said to spark debates but also to educate in a way uh, without being patronizing or anything but but to try right. to get well, people to to reflect sure the sure. film sure doesn't come across that way to me at all uh, can you tell me a little bit more about some of the folks who saw the film and, and reacted with oh this is over the top you know, like yeah. the, the the Facebook photo scene, for instance, yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, let's get a shot for Facebook. Like, really? Right. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, well, it's meant to be absurd also. Yes, like, of course. Of course. It's meant to be a little over, over the top. But, uh, but you know, like it, I I'll often get like the, the question, like, did you ever get any death threats or anything? Like, did it really, really piss off anyone? But sure. I never really got that bad. You know, there's been... Uh, once the, the film started in, uh, circulating on the internet, there's been a few comments on YouTube and stuff like that, but of course, not nothing like really uh, as bad as you'd expect. Like, so I don't know. I, I guess people sort of. It, it's not a, an activist movie. It's, it's kind right, of it's right. a, it's a family drama at its core. So people tend to look beyond the politics. I think, which which is like, um, it means that the film is efficient. You know, because it, it can reach beyond borders. What I love is that that you've basically you've told this story through the eyes of a, uh, of a couple of children, I suppose, but one one in particular. And we obviously see various perspectives. But do you think that at some point uh, we lose that? I don't know that childlike sense of sensibility. Of course, it's a mm -hmm. sense of wonder and mystery, and you know we don't believe in Santa Claus anymore, and some people never believed in Santa Claus, and that's okay mm -hmm. too. But do, do do you know what I mean? Is there yeah, a sense sure. in which dialogue, conversation, being open as kids, it's just well, this is just this is the world that we live right. in. There is no um, other way. That's kind of the like the the difference between uh, nature and nurture. Mm. There's a part of that in the which film is very much sure. a theme in your film. Yeah, of course. Very much. There's there's definitely that in the film, but um, there's also like faith in the next generation. Mm. Like I know for sure. Like I said, I come from a, a you know a, a rural uh, town outside of Montreal, and I know for sure that I'm much more progressive than my parents were. And I know that my kids will most likely, like my kids were, were, are, are going to grow up in Montreal. They're going to be exposed to immigration much more than I was when I was a sure, kid. And I'm sure. much more open-minded than my parents were. So I think like this is a, this is like a work in progress. And I, I, I try to, to believe like that, that we're only a few generations away from getting rid of racism. Like that, that's kind of the, the, the hopeful conclusion in Rebel that, you know, we can put, faith and trust in the next generation so what are you do you have any desire to to turn this into a full length feature or uh is that uh potentially another project down the road is a, a theme that you might re return to i'm i don't expect to turn rebel specifically into a feature i think like it works um on, on, on a short scale but sometimes i feel like people who try to, to stretch out their short films it tends to not be as good as a short film because right. you end up realizing that you know there's a lot of content there it's very dense but if you stretch it out then it's not as effective so i, I don't think i'm gonna stretch it out to a feature but i am working on a feature film right now that's also on social issues and also about immigration but not specifically on, on right-wing extremism uh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't help but at moments think of uh, uh, American History X came to mind uh, sure. as a film. Um, you know, there's a the, the, the contrast and the juxtaposition of how is it that the children can see, or at least this child can see uh, at a certain point, and how is it that the adults 
cannot. Mm-hmm. You know, right. there's that wonderful line when 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 the father's on the phone, what are you going to do with the kids? Mm-hmm. And 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 isn't that kind of what the whole movie is about in a certain mm-hmm. way? You know, there's so yeah. many beautiful themes that you mm-hmm. that you unpack here and I so love that 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 uh, I mean, to me, uh, Pierre Philip, the, 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 this is a film that people could be writing essays about for many years to come. I, I really, I truly, nice. truly believe that because it is layered, it's nuanced, it's complex. Human nature, right? Paradox and contradiction. Um, have you seen the film um, uh, with David Thewlis, uh The Boy with the Striped Pajamas? No, I haven't. There's an opening scene where you're at a party and it's about Nazi Germany. And uh, okay. you're at this party and they're serving hors d'oeuvres and there's entertainment and the kids are running around and they're playing and they're having a great time. And essentially what we're seeing is the celebration of a commander who's been promoted within a death camp. Okay. And this crazy, absurd contrast, yeah. contrast this contradiction yeah. of how could folks who were yeah. uh, presumably normal family folks in the middle of something like that not see what was mm-hmm. actually going on? And I mean, for me, this is a question that keeps coming up with your film as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and obviously, with all that's going on currently, with the inauguration happening in the next couple of days in the U.S., big political mm-hmm. changes ahead of us. Mm-hmm. I just thought I'm always fascinated as to, you know, and you mentioned the eco, uh, eco chambers. How do we get outside of that? How do we get to outside of ourselves? I think it's kind of like that's what I like I said it's what I, I try to do with my films it just spark debates but that also what the film shows is that like you mentioned the the parents are are like they, they don't see the suffering the suffering around them uh, but the film is about you know a kid that reacts and then right. the father who sees his kid reacts and it's like that's the, the ending is kind of very ambiguous and it leaves sure. open to yep. interpretation but my interpretation of it is that probably the father as you know has seen that it, it affected his child and that might lead him to question his belief and you know that's that's once again that's the hopeful ending but uh and you know all all interpretations are, are valuable but that's what i'd like to believe that uh, he was moved by the fact that his own child was moved by what happened and that's going to initiate initiate his uh perhaps change i love i love how you use a stray cat and an ice cream sundae so uh so profoundly actually it's uh nice. it really is quite quite mm-hmm. remarkable and mm-hmm. i mean i i you know for for again for all its uh you know kind of tough subject matter in a sense it it really to me uh, is a, is a hopeful film because this really is about, hmm, reminds me of Magnolia as well. You know, that, mm-hmm. that idea that these, 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 uh, these, these ways of being our worldview is so penetrates so deep. How, how do you ever come outside of that? And the only right. way it seems, I don't know how you would feel about this, mm-hmm. but is it within a community? Right. Right. And, and listening. listening and, and by listening, to, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Listening to each other for sure. Uh, which is like it's hard especially in in social media once again because that especially within the pandemic because social media is now like our main place of interaction with with each other um and and social media tends to like favor uh everything being polarized rather than listening right. to each other and i think like that's i personally like stop using social media to like to I use it like in a professional manner. I, I post like my, my stuff uh, for my career and, and stuff like that. But I, I try not to get too emotional in debates because that's when like very, very polarized opinions scream at each other. And there's no, there's never any middle ground on social media. It's always like whoever screams the loudest it's is going to so get like more likes. Um, and that's, I think that sort of defines the, like the, the current, uh, era for sure and and the symptom of that is what's happening in the states right now for sure like people are super polarized on each sure, sure. each side and never listening to each other and i think we need to like calm down and try to reach a middle ground and try to listen to each other and try to um you know tone down our our own beliefs a little bit so we can try to find some middle ground somewhere 
you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. It's, it's so connected to conversation and dialogue. It's so interesting, you know, without social media, you know, without this technology, I, I, you and I wouldn't be doing this interview today. And, yeah. you know, uh, ironically, and I've said it many times, my podcast is called Face to Face, and we are sort of face to face, you know, uh, the right. philosopher Jean Baudrillard would have something to say about this simulation and simulacra, right? But, yeah. but, 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 but we are face to face, we've met we've developed or we've begun a relationship you right. know and isn't that an amazing thing yeah. isn't that a beautiful beautiful thing somebody mm -hmm. in remote mongolia pierre philippe can watch your film right that's that is a beautiful thing of but course. but but then you can talk about the the yeah, division the, the toxic and, the toxic the, aspects of that the, also that needs like to we we need to find a way to temper to to tone it down a little bit we at the need same time yeah we need to find a way to tone it down a little bit. I think that could be uh, that could be one of the sound bites. Maybe that'll be my uh, that'll be my social media post. How's that? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Sounds hashtag like... hashtag tone relax. <laughs> yeah, hashtag tone it down. Yeah. That's right. Take a chill pill. So, take a chill. So so just before we and I'm so, so sorry, but we we're coming close to close to a, at the end of our conversation on face to face here today. And by the way, folks, if you've enjoyed what you've heard here, please uh, you know like this on uh, on. Uh, YouTube, uh, speaking of social media, follow us there. And uh, we'd love it if you leave us a review on iTunes as well. Uh, Pierre Philippe, before I let you go, though, uh, why don't you remind us again, um, where uh, where can people see this film? And, yeah. and by the by, by the if people have joined uh, halfway through this, I mean, by the sounds of it, pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it's it's available on YouTube, uh, worldwide, video, Vimeo staff fix worldwide. Uh, it's on short of the week also if you're in canada it's on cbc gem and 2tv and crave in quebec also if you're in europe uh, it's on arte uh, if you're in eastern europe it's on hbo europe so it's pretty much everywhere it's pretty much everywhere and well listen what a beautiful what a beautiful important and uh, meaningful film it's it's i hope everyone gets to see this pierre philippe i uh, Thank and you. I Thank wish you so, you so well. Uh, you're welcome. And I wish you so well with uh, all that's coming ahead in your feature. Uh, how's the funding going for that? Just on a practical level, Are you getting there? Or? Yes, I am. I work oh, in the summer. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, good yeah. for you. Well, I, yeah. I, I, I wish you well with that. And uh, thanks again for a wonderful, insightful chat. Uh, we've been talking here today with uh, Pierre Philippe uh, Chevigny uh, about his new film, uh, Rebel. Thanks so much for your time today on, on Face to Face. Thanks for having me. Really.